Okay, so the philosophies that our payment program are based on is to have a guaranteed rate of pay just to ensure that there's no pressure. There's no pressure on the customer, nor is there pressure on the student. Then we have an incentive pay because people have had jobs in the past where they work harder than everybody else. But when the paycheck came, it was the same as everybody else. How do you think it made them feel? Not good. Yeah, so what do you think happened to their performance? Oh, definitely goes down. And I don't blame you. So here, we do reward our students for working harder. It's reflected in their paycheck. So they don't get both. They get either or, whichever one's higher for the week. And we do pay them on a weekly basis. Paychecks are typically mailed out on a Monday. Most of us are on direct deposit, though, so we do get our stuff over the weekend. So I'm going to explain base pay first, then I'll show you the incentive pay, then I'll show you how they work together. I'm going to cover the first two sections a little bit quickly just because I do want to get to the last example. So just bear with me till then and just copy down all the numbers just to make sure that you're clear. I just wouldn't want anything to be unclear if any of you were to be selected. So base pay, as we saw, advertised is $15 per appointment. Now who can tell me how long each appointment is roughly? Look at me to know. Okay. So this is just a quick range. Just to show you uh, an example of what somebody would get paid, I just solely off of appointments. I could have said eight appointments, 12, you know, 27. I'm just using very simple numbers uh, for math purposes. That's just a quick range of what they would get paid on a weekly basis solely off appointments. Now, in order for somebody to get paid for the appointment, the customer has to be at least 30 years old and working. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I do I have to explain why a 22-year-old is not the best prospect? Yeah. Okay, great. So, also the appointments have to be one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one. -on -one meaning uh, one household. So it could be a husband-wife scenario, that's totally fine, uh, as long as it's one household or one family and not a group presentation. Why do you think my students actually prefer group one-on-one uh, -on -one as opposed to group presentations? Definitely more comfortable. Yeah, Beth, um, it's a lot more comfortable for the student for sure. And if the student's comfortable, who else is comfortable? Customer. The customer. So, um, any other thoughts? There's a lot of reasons for this. Well, they can also just focus more on the customer. They don't have to focus their attention on other people. Definitely. Why else? They can just, you know, give more of their time to them. Yeah, and that way they can actually use the product and go ahead and uh, have their full attention. So, if they're focusing on the customer, if they're using the product the whole time, if everyone's comfortable on both parties, what do you think happens more often than not as an end result? They buy something. Yeah, the product is sold, at least 60% of the time. So again, it boils down to what I said earlier. We have a world-class product. I expect world-class customer service. I found that that one-on-one -on -one, um, attention really falls in line with that. If it's in a group, I'm not sure if we'd be able to guarantee. So the way that we track these appointments, we have our version of a time card, where they just basically put in all the appointments that they completed for the week, uh, we count the buck on a weekly basis, verify anything on our end if necessary, and pay them at least that on a weekly basis. Okay, so base pay is pretty easy to understand. Incentive pay. This was designed for people who do better. It's based on a system called career services. Career sales. And what career sales means, it's the cumulative amount that someone has sold since they first started working with the company. So it adds up over time, and as my students hit a certain milestone, they then make them the corresponding percentage. Now, once they make that percentage, they can never go back. They can only increase after that, right? So from zero to $1,000, they're earning 10% commission. From one to three, they're earning 15. Three to six, they're earning 20. Six to 10, they're earning 25. Once they hit $10,000, they're then making 30% commission. There are no uh, weekly, monthly, annual quotas involved. It's not like somebody needs a $10,000 order in order to make 30% off that order. It's once they hit $10,000 in total sales, that they're then making 30% commission off of anything they sell after that. So if selected, we will cover in training uh, where somebody can up to 50% commission. We'll just stick with these for now. Okay. So I'm going to show you an example of somebody's paycheck. This is where you're really going to understand um, how the pay program works. If you learn via taking notes, by all means, take notes in this section if it will help you understand it that much better. If not, though, I'm going to ask if you can just pay attention. Don't need to take notes here. I just really want you to make sure you understand how the pay program works. Okay. So I'm going to use uh, Rachel Robinson as an example. Now let's say it's Rachel's first week on the job and she does 20 appointments. According to base pay, how much is she already guaranteed? Um, $300. 300 right? So let's talk about company averages. 
Okay, who remembers the company average closing ratio? Uh, it's two fifty, right? The closing ratio. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sixty percent. Yeah, sixty percent. So, does anybody know what sixty percent of twenty is? Uh, well, exactly. So if she does twenty appointments, she should have twelve sales. Now let's talk about company average order, which is what you said earlier, which is two fifty. So twelve times two fifty is three thousand. So according to company averages, Rachel should do at least three thousand dollars for that week. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. So let's say that for whatever reason she didn't. And she only managed to do one thousand dollars for that week. She's new, so she's at ten percent. What's ten percent of a thousand? Hundred? Yeah. So this week the base pay is higher than the incentive pay. So again, she gets the higher of the two, which means that that way she get paid the $300. See how that works? Yeah, it does. Okay. So because she did $1,000, if you look to the right, it means that she passed her 10% commission level, meaning she will never be at 10% again. Now she's at 15 until she miss, hits her next milestone. Okay? So it's the second week. Again, 20 appointments. Remember, same averages, she should get paid at least $300, so she should sell at least $3,000. let us say this week she missed the averages yet again. Uh, let's say she progressed, though. So instead of selling $1,000, she sold $2,000, but it's still below average. She's at 15%. 15% of $2,000 is actually $300. So this week, the base and the incentive happen to be the same. So which does she get paid this week? $300. Exactly. So if we add it up, What's 1,000 plus 2,000? 3,000? Let's check. So that means that she passed her 15% commission level. Now she's only 20. You see how I'm just adding it up? Yeah. Okay. So let's say it's the third week on the job. Let's say after three weeks, Rachel's at least on averages. So let's say that week she finally does the $3,000. At 20%, that's actually 600 So what does she get paid that week? The incentive, which is $600. Why? Because it's higher. So it's higher than the base. So every week, we just add up how many appointments they completed, um, see how much that would be. Then we figure out what they would have earned off their sales. Whichever one's being higher, we pay them that. So at this point, can anybody tell me where is Rachel at in total career sales? She has $6,000. Yep. That means she would pass her 20%. Now she's earning 25 So what I'm trying to show you is that inevitably, all of my students to 30 percent it's inevitable as long as they're working with the company it will happen some people takes a little bit longer some people you know go a little bit faster it usually depends on those three things i mentioned earlier the ability the financial objectives and the work ethic that's essentially you know what determines how long it takes them to move up the ladder so i can't stand here and tell you what motivates a certain individual because everyone's different in those three categories but i can tell you because just the way the numbers work out on average usually students hit their first promotion by their first week. So I know it's a lot of numbers, I know it's a lot to take in, but that in order to get selected here today, there's no need to memorize that. If accepted in training, I actually go over this word for word again. All you really need to worry about if accepted is that my students get paid at least $15 per appointment, and that acts as a floor that they have to stand on, right? They can always count on that, it's always going to be there. With the incentive pay, there's no ceiling. Okay. Okay? That we, we don't cap their pay at any point. So can everybody see why I have to be a little bit more selective now? Yeah, based definitely. Based off of so Yeah. Yeah. So the reason we can afford to do this, though, is because of our training. And I'll dive into training now.